Hello, everybody, and welcome back to more of the 2015 Intermediate Math Competition. We're up to question number six. That's the last question in part A. So this is the last question where you can just get away with putting your final answer. Uh, in the, uh, the part B, we need to actually write out our solutions. Now, it's a good idea not to just leave your final answer and, and uh, move on. It's a good idea, if you can, to write a little bit of your, uh, uh, your reasoning and your proof for, for the final answer that you do put in part A. Because if you make a mistake, even just the tiniest calculation error, you're losing five marks. Whereas if you leave some of your work, you can get part marks, potentially up to four part marks in total, which is basically all the marks of the question except for one. So very good idea to leave, uh, leave your work, uh, show your work, and, and you can get part marks if you screw up. And that can contribute to a larger overall score. So let's take a look at question number six. So what does question six say? A total of 2015 tickets. So 2015 tickets, you, you might immediately guess that the year is 2015. As though we didn't already know that. So we have a total of 2015 tickets numbered 1 through 2015, and they are placed in an empty bag. Alfie removes a ticket A from the bag. Bernice then removes ticket B from the bag. And Charlie removes ticket C from the bag, so ticket number A, ticket number B, and ticket number C, whatever A, B, and C are. They notice that A is less than B is less than C, and that A plus B plus C is 2018. In how many ways could this happen? Okay. So, for a question like this, some of the first things I notice are A is less than B is less than C. So really, we're just asked to pick three tickets out of the bag that add up to 2018. Once we have those three tickets, we know that the smallest one always goes to Alfie, and then the next one goes to Bernice, and then the, the largest one goes to Charlie. And that's the only way we can distribute those three tickets. So really, we're looking for just sets of three that add up to 2018. And that's what we're trying to find. And nothing immediately comes to mind. I could do a couple little examples, for example, A1, B2, uh, C, 2015. That would get, definitely give us a total of 2018. But, um, you know, I don't really know, have in mind any of the other combinations off the top of my head, and I certainly don't have a nice, clean way to count them or arrange them. So with a question like this, I personally would try and experiment. Uh, instead of 2015 tickets, maybe we only had four tickets. And then um, the number we're asked to reach is 2018. That's three more than the largest ticket. Uh, that way you can always have one, two, and then the largest ticket, and that'll always add up to it. So how about we just explore the number of ways we can do it if there were four tickets, number one, two, three, four, and we're trying to get them to add up to seven. We'll see what we get, and then maybe we can try a larger example and maybe better understand a pattern. Okay. Let's have n equals 4 tickets. The question we're given has n equals 2015 tickets. And a plus b plus c. In the original question, it's 3 more than the largest ticket. So we'll try n plus 3 equals 7. <clears throat> we could try 6 or, or 8 or something like that. That's perfectly fine, perfectly reasonable. But I'm specifically trying to relate it to the 2018 we saw in the question. How does 2018 relate to the 2015 tickets we have? It's three more. So how many cases do, how many A, B, and C can we have here? Well, let's try some of them out. So uh, one way to do this is, I know A is less than B is less than C. What I could do is specify my largest ticket first and figure out what my A's and B's are. Or I could specify my smallest ticket and figure out what my B and C are. I probably wouldn't want to figure out what B is and then do A's and C's just because it'd be kind of tricky. 
So what I'm going to do, and, and you might have done it differently, is I'm going to pick my C first. So I'm going to start at the, the top, so C could be my 4 ticket, and I could get some cases here, and then I could have my 3 ticket, and maybe I'll get some cases here. But I couldn't have a 2 ticket. Let's think about that. Why couldn't I have C be 2? Well, B would have to be less than C, and there's only one ticket less than than 2. It would have to be 1, and then A would have to be even less than that. And there's no 0 ticket. So in this instance, so uh, we can go from n all the way down to 3. Okay. So if c is 3, then that leaves a plus b, it's got to be 7 minus c, which is 3. Well, uh, we can really only have 1 and 2. Okay, well what if uh, c was 3? Then a plus b has got to be 7 minus C, and that's going to be 4. So what 2 add up to 4? We could have A is 1 and B is 3. Remember, the lowest one always becomes A. Or we could have 2 and 2. Well, that doesn't work. And this one doesn't work either. One, A is 1, B is 3, and C is 3, because ticket number 3 has been chosen twice. So for the n equals 4 tickets, we only have one way to do things. Okay, so that was almost too small a case. We didn't really understand any of the patterns. Once we chose a C, we didn't really get to choose any any uh, thing with A's and B's or, or really make any decisions there. It was really just the 1, 2, 4, and that's the only case that works. Kind of upsetting. So how about we, we up it a little bit? How about we try uh, n equals 5? And then maybe we'll do n equals 6, and we'll see what we've got. I don't expect n equals 5 to have many more patterns, but who knows. So we want uh, a plus b plus c to equal n plus 3, which is 8. So when we're filling out our chart, a plus b has got to be 8 minus c. Okay? So uh, we have A, we have B, we have C, and we can have C as 5, or 4, or 3. Again, we can't have it be 2. Alright, so when C is 5, A plus B has to be 3, so there's once again only one case. Well, one case here. When C is 4, uh, a plus B has got to be 8 minus 4, which is 4. So we could have 1, 3, and this time it works out fine. Or we could have 2, 2, well, that one doesn't work. And with 3, we would need A plus B is equal to 5. So we could have 1, 4, 2, 3, and that's really it. One case here. But here we have two threes, so this case doesn't work. And here, B is not less than 3. Okay, so that one also doesn't work. Okay. So I'm noticing that the 3 case never really gets done. And maybe there's a reason for that. Okay. Because I guess, I guess if C is 3, then B's got to be 2 and A's got to be 1. So the only way you could get the sum to be correct is if the sum was 6, which it never is. Okay, um, so we had two for that one. I wonder if we'll get three for six. So we want a plus b plus c to be three more than six, so that's nine. So here's our a, here's our b, here's our c. We could have c be six, and that will give us a one and a two, and that's the only case that works for six. How about five? Well, then we'd need a plus b is equal to four. And once again, 1 and 3 is really the only one that works here. Okay, can't have 2, 2. And then, uh, what if we had C is 4? If C is 4, then A plus B needs to be 5. So, if, if C is 4, then A plus B needs to be 5, and 2, 3 is really the only time that's ever going to happen. 
Uh, you could have one and four, but again, the four ticket would be duplicated and you'd have a problem. And we're never going to have three. I'm going to stop including three. So we had one case for six, one case for five, and one case for four for a total of three. So I was right in my guess. Um, I don't know whether or not we should do n7 or maybe jump to something like n is 9. I think, I think in the interest of, uh, of the pattern, how about we jump to n is 10. So a plus b plus c is equal to 10 plus 3, which is going to be equal to 13. Okay. Then we have a, b, and c. Notice that whatever c is, a plus b is 13 minus c. So C can be 10, and if it's 10, we're just going to have the 1 and 2 case again. That's all we can do. A plus B has to be 13 minus 10, which is 3. For 9, uh, it's got to add up to 4, so that's still 1 and 3, or 2 and 2, but of course that case doesn't count. How about for 8? C is 8. Well, we could have uh, 1 and 4, or 2 and 3. Okay. 13 minus 8 is 5, so we need these guys to add up to 5. How about 7? Well, then we need A and B to add up to 6. So I'm looking at 1 and 5, 2 and 4, 3 and 3 doesn't work. Okay. Now, how about uh, 6? Well, if it's 6, then A and B need to add up to 7. So we could have 1 and 6. That's not going to work. We could have 2 and 5. That'll work. We could have 3 and 4. That certainly works. And we can't really have anything else. Okay. How about 5? Well, now we need A and B to add up to uh, 8. So we'd have 1 and 7, but 7 is greater than 5, so that one doesn't work. We could have 2 and 6, but 6 is greater than 5, that doesn't work. Uh, 3 and 5, no, that doesn't work. And 4 and 4, that doesn't work. Okay. And uh, 3 is not going to work. Does 4 work at all? No, I don't think 4 will work at all. Why won't 4 work? So if C is 4, so C is 4, A plus B... Well, each of these is less than C, so that's definitely less than 2C. So A plus B plus C is definitely less than 3C. And if 3C is less than our 13 or N plus 3, then we're going to have a bit of a problem. Okay. So C has always got to be greater than or equal to our target number, in this case 13, divided by 3. Uh, do we need to round up that at all? We'll say he's got to be greater than. Okay. So does that always give us the lowest C where something might work? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, um, well actually, let's refine this a little better. B is always less than or equal to C minus 1. At best, B is the number just before C. And at best, A is the number just before B, so he's the number 2 before C. That's at best. So at best, A plus B plus C is it less than or equal to C minus 2 plus C minus 1 plus C, which is 3C minus 3. Okay. So A plus B plus C is less than or equal to 3C minus 3. That's what we need. And we want that to... B, so we want them to be, for possible, 
abilities, I guess, max? Is that what I want? Well, we'll never have one if that's less than n plus 3. That's the cases where it won't happen. And so uh, 3c minus 3 less than n plus 3. That's 3c less than n plus 6. So c less than n plus 6 over 3. That Those are exactly the times where you'll never be able to get an a, b, and a c to add up to n plus 3. So we must have c greater than or equal to n plus 6 over 3. Okay. So now we have sort of a lower bound on our on our c's. We have a, a lower, uh, our, our list can only go from c is the highest ticket all the way down to n plus 6 over 3. Okay. So now we have a range of c values. And I'm thinking that for each c value, we get an n minus c is, is what, uh, or sorry, an n plus 3 minus c is what a and b need to add up to. I believe if I hand you a constant k, there is a way to tell how many pairs a plus a and b with a less than b so that a plus b is equal to k. Let's see if we can work out a formula for that. Okay? So let's take a look here. So for a given C, we know A plus B has got to be equal to N plus 3 minus C, whatever it is. Okay. So, um, So for any value k, um, I don't want to say this. Oh, so I seem to have somehow erased part of that. Okay. Um, well, how about we just make a chart of what uh, n plus 3 can, minus c can be. Well, if n is if uh, c is, we'll start over here. So c, well, he can be n, he can be n minus one, he can be n minus two, and he can keep going. And n plus three minus c, well, then he can that can be three, then it goes to four, then it goes to five, then it goes to six. So we have much more reasonable numbers to deal with. And we need possible A's and B's. Well, in this case, we have 1 and 2. Here, we always have 1 and 3. Here, we have 1 and 4. And 2 and 3. For 6, we have 1 and 5. 2 and 4. 3 and 3 won't work. Uh, for 7, we should get uh, 1 and 6. 2 and 5. 3 and 4. Okay. So I'm noticing a pattern. One, 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 two, two, three, three. Okay. Uh, so that should be for eight. So let's see. Uh, for eight, we could have one and seven. We could have two and six. We could have three and five. We'd like to have four and four, but that one doesn't count. Okay. So. We have the pairs A less than B. So A plus B is N plus 3 minus C. Our 1, N plus 3 minus C minus 1, 2, N plus 3 minus C minus 1. So that's, those are our A's, those are our B's. And we need to go all the way up to 
So for 7 we had 3, for 8 we had 3, so we take the number we're given, n plus 3 minus c, we subtract off 1, we divide it by 3, and we use the floor function. Okay? If you haven't seen the floor function, uh, by all means you can go and Google the floor function, but really quickly it just means we sort of take the greatest integer less than or equal to the number. So we're only going to be using the floor function with positive numbers here. So basically, it's uh, forcing you to round down. That's all it is here. Okay? And then here we'll have... Um, minus 1 divided by 3 and then round up. Also, this... You know, it should be divided. Uh, no, it should be divided by two. Okay, so I'm pretty sure these are all the pairs that will always work, given a particular n plus three minus c. Now I'm ignoring the fact that b has to be less than c. I'm going to assume that my uh, uh, I'll, I'll limit c appropriately here. But let's just double check that. Uh, so let's suppose n plus 3 minus c was equal to 8. We'd have 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 8 minus 1 over 2, floor function. So that's 7 over 2, so that's 3.5, so that's 3. And this is 8 minus 1 over 2, so that's uh, 3.5, so then we round up. So that should be 4, but I want it to be 5, so... I think I have to do a plus one there. Yeah. Okay. So now I have formulas for A and B here. So given a specific value of C, we can figure out what A and B have to add up to, and then we know how many pattern or how many pairs there are. So that's assuming that uh, my top choice for B is less than C. That's assuming that that can happen. Okay. So what does this get me? Huh. I might have done a whole lot of work for nothing. Let's let's think here. So given a C, I can get the number of pairs A and B. And then I should know how many C's I can use. This should uh, n plus 6 over 3 here. Hmm. Okay, well, how about we dive right in and say... that n is 2015. Okay? n is 2015, so we're doing the actual case in the question. I think we've got enough to maybe put it together, but we'll see. We'll see if we're missing something. So our, our sum that we want is 2018. That's fine. So I know I can start off my little chart with C, 2015. And how many A's and B's can I have here? Uh, I can have one pair of A and B, so that'll be the one, two. Okay. And then I can go all the way down to, well, what was my lower bound? Add six, divide by three. C is at least add six, divide by three. So I'm going to grab my trusty calculator. 2015 plus 6 divide by 3. 
So C has to be at least 764. That's the that's the lowest we can go with it. If you if you doubt it, take a look at 763. Suppose C were 763. At best, you could have B be 672. Am I saying 763? I mean 673. Okay, let me start over. The lowest C can be is 674. And we can always double check that by saying, well, what if C were 673? At best, B could be 672. And then at best, A could be 671. And when we add those up, we get 2016. That's less than the 2018. So at the best case scenario, with C uh, being 674, at best, we just can't make it. Or sorry, with C being 673, at best we can't make it. So we need that 674. Now for 674, uh, if I have 673, and then I think 671 will do the trick, we get 2018. Okay. So with 674, how many pairs A, B can we have? If we can get all the pairs, then I think we'll be all set, and, and we'll just sort of need to add some stuff up. Uh, the question is, will we be able to get all the pairs? So how many pairs work with 674? So 674, we can have, uh, what's, uh, so 2018 minus 674. Uh, it's going to end in a 4, but I'll grab my calculator again. 2018 minus 674. So we want 1344. So I'm, I can go from 1 up to 1343. No, that, that doesn't work. I don't like that. That would be one of the possibilities, and that doesn't work out. That doesn't give me a B value that's less than my C value. Hmm. Starting to starting to not like this question. Well, starting to be challenged by this question. I, I don't not like it yet, but uh, certainly tricky. So I think we've thought about it the wrong way. Okay, new approach. New approach, because that didn't work out. We tried for it, but it didn't work out. Because uh, the number of pairs we get for C equals 674, we couldn't easily calculate that. So new approach. Uh, so once we have C, B can be... Well, B must be 1. Must be less than or equal to C minus 1. Okay? Um, hmm. So, uh, A is equal to N plus 3 minus C minus B, but he also must be less than or equal to B minus 1. So, in the same way that we had a lower bound for C, can we get uh, a lower bound for B? So 
So I'll bring the b over to the other side. So n plus 3 minus c minus 1 has got to be less than or equal to 2b. So n plus 2 minus c is less than or equal to 2b. So n plus 2 minus c all over 2 has got to be less than or equal to b. So now we know c can be between uh, n and n plus 6 over 3. And now, based on our c, we know that b can be between c minus 1 and n plus 2 minus c over 2. Okay. And it can be any of these values. In fact, every single one will, every, so every b in the range n plus 2 minus c over 2, less than or equal to b, less than or equal to c minus 1, has an a to match it. Right? Let's just double check. We're going to double check and pick some small numbers. Okay? We're going to pick some small numbers. I'm going to say, um, uh, well, what's one of the, the cases we did before? We did what? Uh, 10? N is 10? So n is equal to 10, and uh, let's say c was, um, which one had a lot? Which one had a lot, because that's going to help us out more. I, think, I want to say 7, but maybe it was 8. Uh, 7 or 6 would be fine. So let's, say, let's take c is equal to 7. So we're saying that b is uh, so 10 plus 2 minus 7 over 2, less than or equal to b, less than or equal to c minus 1, so that's 7 minus 1. So b can be between 6 and uh, 10 plus 2. Minus 7, uh, so that's 5 over 2, so 2.5. So B can be between 3 and 6. So the 3 is right, right? If C was 7, so if C was 7, then we could have had, uh, could have had 1 and 5 and 2 and 4, but 3, 4, 5, and 6 weren't good B values. So what have we done wrong here? We've done something wrong. Okay, well, first thing I notice is this should be a plus over here. So that should be a 4. But I don't think that's going to help us enough. That suggests to me that uh, 17, or 14 minus 7 over 2, so that's 7 over 2, so that's 3.5. So B's got to between, be between 4 and 6.
but in this case, b between 4 and 5. So the 6 didn't quite work out for us. Why not? Well, it wasn't cut off by the 4. We didn't definitely cut off by the 6. Um, Okay, um, B has to be less than or equal to C minus 1, yeah, we got that, but it's also got to be less than the remainder, I mean, actually less than. Because otherwise we... It, this extra 6 here makes us want to have a 0 and a 6, but that's not possible. Okay. So we can either always account for that, uh, which I don't know whether or not we can. Uh, is C minus 1 definitely bigger than N plus 3 minus C? I think it should be. So, I think this is true. It doesn't look like that's always true. Um, hmm. Well, let's just do a quick little test. Okay, uh, so mine is going to be 10. So C will be, uh, well, if C is 10. Then B at best could be 9, but that, that doesn't work. But the other thing is saying B at best could be 2. I like that better. How about all the way down to C is equal to 5? Well, let's do C is equal to 6 first. Um, B equal 5. And the other thing is saying B equal to 7. Okay, so, hmm, so we almost perfectly have the range of values for B in terms of C. What if we did this another way? solve for everything in terms of a. B's got to be greater than or equal to a plus 1, and C's got to be greater than or equal to b plus 1, so in general, C is greater than or equal to a plus 2. Maybe we're solving for the wrong thing. Maybe it shouldn't be everything in terms of our choice of C. Maybe it should be everything in, in terms of our choice of a. Okay? And when we do that, a plus B plus C, I don't know why I keep getting the plus sign there. It's going to be greater than or equal to 3A plus 3. So 3A plus 3 has definitely got to be less than or equal to 218. 
So A has got to be less than or equal to 2, 15 over 3. So A is less than or equal to 6, 7, 1. Okay. Now for a particular choice of A, what are my possibilities for B and C? So if A is equal to 6, 7, 1, then B plus C has got to be equal to, well, it's 218 minus 6, 7, 1. So B plus C has got to be 1, 3, 4, 7. But I know that A, B, and C must be greater than A, and C must be greater than B. So I could write B as A plus uh, X, where X is a positive integer, and I could write C as A plus Y, where Y is a positive integer that is greater than X. Okay. So to determine B and C, the possibilities for B and C, I just need the possibilities for X and Y. So if I have A is 6, 7, 1, B plus C, which is 2A plus X plus Y, it's going to be equal to 13, 4, 7. So X plus Y is really just 218 minus 3A. Okay? So for A is 671, X plus Y is going to be uh, 218 minus 3 times 671. I'm feeling a little better about this one, so that's 5. So our choices for X and Y are 1, 4, 2, and 3. Now let's see if those ones make sense. 6, 7, 1, and then uh, B would be 6, 7, 2, and then C would be 6, 7, 5. Well, that works. How about 6, 7, 1, and then B would be, add 2, so that's 6, 7, 3, and then add another one, so that's 6, 7, 4. Well, that one also works. If A is 6, 7, 0, that's definitely a possibility. X plus Y would be um, 218 minus 670 times 3. So you'd be 8. That makes sense. We'd go up by 3. And so we'd have possibilities of 1 and 7, 2 and 6, 3 and 5, and 4 and 4, but that one doesn't work. I'm liking this a lot better. How about A is uh, 6, 6, 9? Well, X plus Y would have to be 11. So we get 1 and 10, 2 and 9, 3 and 8, 4 and uh, 7, 5 and 6. Okay. <clears throat> and we've sort of already looked at how to, given a number, figure out the integers with the uh, integers x, y, so that a, x plus y is equal to the given number and x is less than y. And this time, they'll always work. So that's 11 minus 1 over 2, and we take the floor. 8 minus 1 over 2, and we take the floor. 5 minus 1, and we round it down. That's 2. That's 3. And that's 5. Okay. So can we do this for... Is, is there a quick way we can add all these up?
Well, uh, if A is even, then X plus Y will be even. See, the problem is it's really hard to add up floor functions. When we round down, it's really hard to add that up. It really is. So let's break it into two cases. If A is even, then uh, x plus y, 2018 minus 3A, is even. If A is odd, then similarly x plus y, uh, that's 2018, that's an even number, minus 3 times an odd number, so that's odd times an odd, so that's an odd number. So an even minus an odd is odd. Okay. So for the odd ones, we just needed to subtract 1 and divide by 2. Because subtracting 1 makes it an even number, that's divisible by 2, so we don't need to round down. Now if our x and y add up to an even, even number, We do need to round down, and so actually what we would do is we could get that exact number by subtracting off another one, k minus 2 divided by 2. Okay. So we go 6, 7, 1, 6, 6, 9. These ones will give us the odd numbers. 6, 6, 7, and we had 5, so k is 5. Uh, 11, we go up by 6 is 17, okay, so the numbers we want are 5 minus 1 over 2, 11 minus 1 over 2, so that's 2, 5, uh, 17 minus 1 over 2, if we're going up by 6s, then that should be 8, which it is, so we need to go all the way down to 1. So k is equal to 2015, and there will be 2015 minus 1, so that's 2014, 2, so that's 1007. Okay, so we need to add up all those. Uh, which we can do in a moment. And then for the even ones, 6, 7, 0, 6, 6, 8, all the way down to 2, we needed to get, um, so was that? That was 8, and then we had 4, well, we would have 14, it goes up by 4s again. There's not 4s, 6s. Uh, And we get all the way to 2012 there. And so this would be 8 minus 2 over 2, so that's 3. This would be 14 minus 2 over 2, so that's 6. These will go up by 3s again. And that will go all the way up to uh, 12 minus, uh, 2012 minus 2, 2010, divide that by 2, so that should be 1,005. Okay. So we just need to add all these up. Uh, what's the best way to add these up? Uh, da -da -da -da. Well, I noticed that 3 plus 6 plus all the way up to 1005. Well, that's the same as, if I take out a factor of 3, I've got 1 plus 2 plus all the way up to, uh, what's 1,005 divided by 3? 3, 3, 5. Okay? 
Now there's a special way to add up all the numbers from one up to a given number. You take the given number, in this case 335, we take 335, we do 335 plus 1, we multiply those together, and then we divide by 2. So in this case, 335 times 336 divided by 2 Five six two eight zero, and then when we multiply by three, because remember we took out a factor of three from everything, we get one six eight eight four zero. Okay. So now we've added up the cases where a is even. Now that we stumbled onto the right track, we're just adding up cases now. So now let's look at what ha what happened when the a's were odd. Okay. They're not all multiples of three, so it's slightly off, but we can deal with that. So we had uh, 2 plus 5 plus all the way up to 1007. We're going to have to figure this number out and add it to this other number, 168840. So um, what can we do here? Well, this is an arithmetic sequence. It's an arithmetic sequence starting with 2 with a common... Uh, uh, it's not ratio, common difference of D, or uh, D equals 3. So, there's a formula for this, which is eluding me for a moment. I don't know what the heck, uh, I can't remember the formula off the top of my head, and I don't want to uh, waste any more time than I already have. But it's never a waste to work out a problem, although this one did take us a while to figure it out. So if I add 1 to both of them, to, uh, to everything, adding 1 to this one, I get 1,008. Okay. So this is 3 times 1 plus all the way up to 335, and then 336. So there were 336 of these uh, terms, so we added 336 to the whole thing, so we're going to subtract 336 to get the original one. And we just do the same sort of thing. 335 three, 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 times 336 three, all over 2. And then we subtract off an additional 336 because we added one to each of these to make this uh, a multiple of 3 thing. The number is 1 up to 336, so we do 336 and 337. Okay, 336 times 337 divided by 2, multiplied by 3, subtract off the original 336 that we added on, 169512. I fully admit there are probably better ways of adding this up, but they escape me for the moment. So let's just add these up. 168840. So we should get a final answer of 338352. So that's the answer I'm sticking with. I think it looks like a good answer. So, what we tried to do, and let's just go back and do a little review as to what we actually did for this question. Because it certainly took us a little while. We realized 215 is kind of big. That was the first thing we did. We realized it's kind of a big number. So how about we look at some smaller cases? 4, 5, 6, well, these were okay, but they weren't really giving us a whole lot of patterns. Each one of these gave us a single instance. So we jumped ahead to 10, and that gave us a little more information. We noticed we always had 1, and then 1, and then 2 pairs, 2 pairs. So we tried to get a better handle on things. We noticed that... Uh, Five and four, nothing would work there because eventually the B's we were getting were way too big. So we tried to put a lower bound on C. Okay. Now choosing to do C first ultimately proved the big mistake for us, but I wouldn't say it was obvious that it would have uh, that it was just a giant, uh, you know, uh, the wrong path, I guess. Uh, but once we tried to get the lower bound on C. We said, okay, well, those, so those are the C's that should, in theory, work. 
So if we take one of those c's, well, I can figure out, given a, a constant number, k, I can figure out all pairs a less than b that add up to k. So we tried to work through that. We worked through that a little bit. And we had a guess. Okay. And we worked it out. Given a constant, we can quite easily figure out all the pairs a and b that work that way. But then when we tried to take that and apply it to the situation, it works great towards the top with really high values of c, but it sort of faltered when we got to the middle, to the lowest values of c. So we said, okay, that's not going to work. Well, why, why, why don't we take a look at what b can be in terms of c? Because eventually these b values are ranging way too high. They're getting higher than the c ticket, and that's not going to work. Okay? So then we said, well, what can we do to get a bound on b? Well, we can get a nice lower bound on b, just like we got a nice lower bound on c. But the problem is the upper bound on b isn't quite there. Sometimes it's c minus 1, if c is a lower number. Sometimes it's n plus 1 minus c, the remainder. It can't be higher than a plus b. But we couldn't really tell which is which. When should what uh, this be? Uh, when should b be all the way up to c minus 1, or when should it be uh, all the way up to n plus 3 minus c? We couldn't quite tell. And so I internally said, this is taking longer than an intermediate 6 should. So maybe we've done things a little wrong. So I said, well, instead of focusing on C, remember, way, way back at the very start of the video, I said you could probably attack this by choosing your Cs or your As. Not a good idea to necessarily choose your Bs. So I said, let's switch gears and choose our As. That way, we don't have to figure out upper bounds on B and C. We just sort of need a lower bound on on B and C, and the, their upper bounds are basically uh, N. Okay. So, once we have, uh, once we've chosen A, we have lower bounds for B and C in terms of A, and but we know what A plus B plus C should be. So we get 2018 here. And um, that gives us uh, a range for A's. And once we have these A's, then we get a range for B plus C's. And we can write b and c in terms of a plus positive integers. And we can always make it so one is less than the other. Okay. And once we had that, then it just became a matter of choose, uh, finding all pairs x plus y that equal a particular constant with uh, x less than y and both of them being positive integers, which was a problem we had sort of already tackled early in our earlier in our experimentation. Okay. So combining, even, even when we fail, we sort of got a little extra information. Doing that, we then uh, were able to make our little chart here with uh, A671, then A670, 661, and we were able to work some of these out. It's all nice and neat. Okay. And then we said, well, 2, 3, 5, that's not really going to give us any sort of pattern. But if we uh, take a look at them, odds versus evens, then it sort of made it a little easier to add everything up. Okay. One thing I am a little concerned about, though, is um, we had problems when we tried to look at it just with C. We had problems when the Cs were getting really low. So we switched and we started looking at the As. Now we we didn't we uh, then started looking at A is six seven one, A is six seven zero. So those are the high ones. And we check, they, they all work out. But what happens if A is really low? Are we still getting the correct values? Or are we getting some other situation where the numbers just aren't counting right? So just right now, before we, we leave the, the uh, question, I'm going to compute how many I think we should have for A equals 1. So A equals 1, I think we said it was uh, 1,007. But does that make sense? Okay. So we'll just do a little sanity check. A equals 1. Does, does it break down for some reason with the really small numbers? A equals 1. So uh, x plus y should equal to 1,007. So we could have x and y, that would be 1 and 1,006. And then we'd have 2 and 1,005. And so on. And what would our B's and our C's be? Well, in this case, B would be 2. 
and C would be C would be 1007. Oh wait, sorry, that's that's not the sum of the x and the y, that's the, the number of possibilities. My mistake. Um, 2015, I think. If, if A is 1, then uh, this should be 2015. Yeah. So we could have 1 in 2014. We could have 1 in 2000, or 2 in 2013, all the way down to 1007 and 1008. What are the B's and C's we get in these cases? 2 and 2015. Well, that works. 3 and 2014, well that one works. And here we'd have 1008 and 1009 and 1008 plus 1009, that's 217 plus our starting A value of 1 gives us 218. So it looks like this does in fact, this is the correct method to use. Okay, So uh, that took a long time because I didn't see the right, right way to do it. And that's okay. Had I been doing this on a contest, I probably would have left it and come back. Um, something you notice on these contests a lot is, uh, I would say A1 through 4, very straightforward. You can usually do them. B1 and 2, surprisingly easier than one might think, even though they're in the B section. They're the easy written questions. So that doesn't mean they have to be harder than the final answer questions. So I'd say the optimum way to do the contest was A1 through 4, B1, then either B2 or A5, and then the other one. And then A6 can be quite a doozy, even though it's just the final answer you need. And B3 is usually the hardest. So I, if I had gotten stuck with that C work, I probably would have skipped it, moved on to B1 and B2, and then maybe come back and, with a fresher mind, tried the A, uh, the, the approach we did with A. But that's it for Part A on the uh, 2015 Intermediate Paper. So we're going to start part B in the very next video and start doing actual written solutions, even though we've been doing written solutions all along, just so that we get part marks. So uh, hopefully I haven't steered you away, and I'll see you for part B in the next video.